At the heart of East Africa lies an economic hub, a center of commerce, power and communication. With over 110 years of history, Nairobi, Kenya has sprung from a colonial outpost to a bustling city of 4 million, growing each day with rural immigrants in search of education and employment. It is a city of contrast, a mix of faiths and cultures, and a blend of East and West. With one of the largest rich poor divides in the world, Nairobi is known for its striking beauty but also for its stark contrast. Poverty and wealth live side by side. Electric fencing, razor wire, stone walls, and iron gates separate the rich from the poor. Crime, corruption, unemployment and injustice plague a divided city. We live here in a city of Nairobi where there are four million people but perhaps 55 percent of the population are living on just five percent of the land. One section of the population is trying to get connected to high-speed fiber optic internet and 50% of the city may yet be connected to fresh drinking water. We live in a very divided city. We live in a city where I think 10% of the population control about 47% of the income and the poorest 10% have uh, less than 2% of the income. So it seems to us that the place where the church really needs to be present and active and ministering in a sustainable and transforming way is right here in the heart of the slum. A railway line runs through Kibera, one of Africa's largest slums, home to nearly one million residents. Most residents live on less than two dollars a day. Amidst a maze of mud walled shanties and iron sheet roofing. For the last eight years I've lived in Kibera and worked in Kibera. I've observed a number of challenges which I believe is common to most of the slums. Top on the list is poverty. But poverty is a product of many forces, economic, social, political, even religious. The Anglican Church is very strong in the city, but it's not so strong in some of the poorest areas of the city. We are working with about 150 churches around the city. We begin with holistic discipleship. How do you love God and love your neighbor at the same time, and how do you do that practically? How does a church serve a local community? And then we equip uh, pastors and church leaders with specific skills in economic empowerment, uh, in children's ministries, and in youth ministry. In Kibera, there are many challenges that children go through. According to UNICEF, uh, the report that released in 2006, 34% of child abuse cases are to be found in urban centers, including Kibera in Nairobi. Center for Urban Mission Children Ministry has three intervention strategies. One, in the area of child evangelism and discipleship. Two, in the area of parenting, how are children parented in such a context? Three, the area of developing child protection policies in churches. The Department of uh, Economic Empowerment mobilizes churches so that the churches can be able to mobilize their members and members of their specific communities to start small savings groups using the small resources that they have. 
and when they come together through social capital, they can be able to raise resources to help them as a group. There are around 14 of them and they run a small savings group and that, from that savings group is where they get the money to start and upscale the businesses that we can be able to see. And there are several things which they keep on saying that they've been able to manage to do because of the small businesses that they have represented here. Biashara yangu ninauza skuma, tomato. My business involves selling kale, tomatoes, onions, and fruits. Our business group has helped me. We all come together and collect some money. When I had a problem, the group helped me out because business was in bad shape. I was very happy for their support. I am one of the group members. There are 14 of us who meet on Wednesdays. We each contribute some money for savings and we give loans to one another. The person who receives the loan usually pays it back after one month with an interest. When I lack something in my salon, like hair oil, braids, or combs, I borrow money from the group and I buy those things. In Nairobi, youth represent three quarters of the population. Massive unemployment and lack of educational opportunities have created a culture of idleness, poverty, drug abuse and crime. Across the city, local churches have taken various approaches in their attempts to alleviate poverty and bring about economic change. I'm Reverend James Agrochin. I'm the vicar of uh, this church, St. Jerome Church in Katikira. And we have got four local churches uh, with a team of quite a number of people serving under us. The people here are very receptive to the gospel. But most of the things that we have studied here have succeeded because of the cooperation we get from the people. My name is Joshua Omoga, a member of St. Jerome SK Church. I've been a member for the last six years and I'm coordinating the social programs of the church. We have five projects in the church, homework lab for school going children, we have tailoring project for, the, for ladies who are out of school, we have soap making project for the youth, we have microfinance for the entire community and we also have vocational training for out of school children. I am a beneficiary of the homework club. Having learned about the homework club, I took the initiative as an individual came and I was granted the chance. I had all I could need for my studies. Having been one of the members, uh, I found it wise, at least good, to assist those who are within, assisting them with the, the questions that maybe they bring into the office. We help them tackle them out, as maybe I still plan for something to do in future. Center for Urban Mission is a program of Carlisle College School of Theology. The mode of training is that we have those who are full-time and they go for three years. We also have a parallel program, those who come in the evenings, but in a part-time basis because they come in very few hours. We also have the Center for Urban Mission now. It was also a full-time program, although in the Center for Urban Mission we take pastors who are already in ministry. And because we don't want them to come out of their ministry to come and stay in college for three years, this program operates in a way that pastors uh, come every morning from their places of ministry? Well, the vision of uh, the training here at Kalau College is transformation. This really is the word. Now in the first instance, this transformation takes place through the gospel. When people are reconciled to God, when they, are, they have peace with God, uh, it results in changed lives. And this can only come about when people proclaim the gospel loudly and clearly. And this is what we do at Kalau College. We train people to be able to excel in gospel proclamation. But in the second instance, it's about helping evangelists who are proclaiming the gospel to be involved in their communities to bring about change. And we offer them training to give them the skills, capacities, and ability to be socially involved.